Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Sport Fishing on the Fly. The thing about bar fishing on the Skeena is as you can tell, it's early morning. You have to get up at about four in the morning, get prepared, get on the water by five, 5.30 at the latest in order to get the best bars. So today, it's all about bar fishing on the Skeena River as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you in part by Islander Reels, Precision Reels. Hardy and Gray's Fly Fishing Rods, Born to Fish. And the Freshwater Fishery Society of BC. Catch what you've been missing, Go Fish BC. Fish on! <laughs> Yeah. Look at that. There's sea lice. Look at that. Yeah, sea lice. Sea lice right on. on the right on the fish, right there. So you know how fresh that guy is. He just came out of the ocean. And he's a little sockeye, so oh, he just wants to go. Oh, there goes that little sockeye. Not a yeah. bad catch, but shows you how fresh they are up here. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? They still have sea lice on it. Still them. sea lice just coming in from the salt. Mm, it's that's been... crazy. We just started out, so hopefully some fish put through, because when you're bar fishing, you have to have the fish moving. Wow, and it's nuts too, because, yeah. I mean, you look at the uh, look at the weather we've had, it's August. <laughs> look at us, <laughs> funneled up, pouring rain. Pretty standard for me, when me and Les show up, isn't it? Yeah, it's always <laughs> every it time. Is. Oh, well, it should be a good day. Looking forward to it. Like maybe another another sockeye. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, looks like a little sockeye, perhaps. Yeah, little sockeye. Scrapping good. These sockeye aren't too tough. Boy, it's around. <laughs> I think he finally figured out he's hooked. Right in the mouth there, you just ate it. Just a nice little sockeye. Now these are real nice fish. You're allowed to keep about four of these, but you know, we're letting them all go. But there's a small little sockeye. Oh, there he goes, just flicked off. Nice little fish to start, a little action. Hey, fish are better than nothing. And the nice thing out here is when they, when the fish start do coming in, usually with the sockeye comes some steelhead. So that's what we're hoping to get out here right now. And there are some big coho moving through the system, so let's give it a go again. Little egg pattern, not bad. Well, we always talk about common courtesy out here. And we have the bar, you know, and the bar is established. You can see up where Malty is, where Dale is, where I am. And there's a lot of room to move along here. And one thing you don't want to do is ever invade on somebody else's turf. So what's happened is we've had a gentleman come in, he's pulled up on the bar, and essentially just walk through and push our aerial. One thing you don't want to do is do something like that because it can make the day of fishing really tough. There's a lot of room for everybody on this bar. So one thing to remember when you're out here, use some common sense and common courtesy. Oh, well, looks pretty good. Looks like a big coal maybe, eh? Yeah. And the weather, it's come in. You know what? A little bit of rain came in and we had a little push of fish. Uh, we lost a couple. Finally, deal hooked this one. You lost a couple. Yeah. But it is tough. Let me grab the glove. I'll go and grab the glove here. Now, where is the glove? I'll try to get him up in here. There's a lot of wood here. You'll have to go right in yeah, there. Yeah, I'll go right over here. Oh, 
Oh, might be a steelhead, eh? Maybe, I don't know, I can't tell yet. It's trying to go in that wood. It's like a steelhead. No, no, I don't know yet. No? I'm looking for soft spots, but yeah, it might be a steelhead. It's got I a lot of spots on the back. Watch that wood. Jeez. I should have took him right up there. Why, you got wood? Wow. You're out of there. There's no wood in here. Isn't there? Nope. There you go, Don. Ah, steelhead. Nice, uh, nice big doe. Nice. nice. Hey, steelhead. Ah, there she is there. I'll let you unhook it. Right next so you got the, uh, that's a nice fly. We might tie on the bench, that big rabbit. But right, there's sure. there, you know, that's a, I don't know, eight, eight pound doe probably. Yeah. But just beautiful. Look at the colors on that fish. Isn't that gorgeous? Like they're just nice. You know, you can tell it's a steelhead. Got the spots, spots on the tail. You know, but just chrome. Isn't that nice? All right, well, let's let her go, eh? Let her go. You can bring her over here, maybe. Oh, maybe, yeah. Just on the. I think she'll find her way out anyway. I think she would, but let's get her in the curb. Right there, she is. There she is. There. Ah, there she goes. Very nice steelhead. Yeah. Oh, there's more there. Right. Got to be some coming up. Well, I lost a couple of nice ones in there, but I have the big rabbit strip. Yeah. And it's got the uh, big long tail on it because the water's got dirtier today with all this rain. Yeah. And I've had some that where they pull, I think, and skip the tail. They don't get quite hooked up right. Yeah. Because, you know, the steelhead hit right yeah. at the end of the right swing. The and I think that's a good point, too, is we do have fairly murky water. And we tend to go with these bigger patterns when we do get a bit of murky water. Yeah. yeah. We, we had, uh, earlier in the week, we had great conditions. Yeah. You know, clean water, single yeah. small flies. I tend to, the dirtier the water gets, the bigger I go. Yeah, and colorful, too. Colorful. You know, you know they always like the purple. Purple and pink. It's winter. Those are my favorite head. for yeah. sure. And a combo, if you do them two tone, yeah. it seems to be even better. Yeah. So excellent. Well that could be a good candidate for the bench. See if we can get it more. Another one I'm gonna I'm gonna actually maybe change it up. In all our shows we like to talk about equipment, but one thing we never seem to talk about is clothing, things that you should have to be equipped with to fish these streams and rivers that we fish. I always like to come out, obviously, when it's raining or we're going to be waiting or you've got really bad conditions, lightweight waders. Now it is summertime, it is August, it should warm up a little bit, but we have cloudy conditions. I've got a real nice pair of these hardy lightweight waders, real easy to, to put on. Plus the nice thing is they've got two really great features and one is this gravel guard. Now this gravel guard is excellent because you can fold it up to get your foot off and you can fold it right over your boots to cover them up. The other nice thing is the waiting belt. I've got, a, I've got a waiting belt on here. And the beauty of this waiting belt is if I unclip it, I can show everybody it's got a nice back support to it. So you unclip this and it's got a real good back support. This helps you wait all day. A lot of times your back gets sore, but Hardy supplies a nice waiting belt that keeps the water out and actually supports your back. The last thing I want to talk about are the waiting boots. Now I've got a, a brand new pair of these corkers waiting boots. And this is an ingenious design. It's some of the best waiting boots I've seen. You can look at the felt sole that are actually, you can pull these off, pull this tab on the back, the whole felt sole comes off and it's interchangeable. You can put on spikes, you can put on felt, you can put on anything you need for the fishing condition. The beauty of these corkers also is a, this little pull tab. You pop it out and you can pull the coil right up, get your foot out very easily. You push the tab in, and you can just screw this wire down to tighten up your boot and you're ready to go. It's instant on, it's instant off, and plus you don't have any laces to worry about. So again, a great new design by Corker for the wading boots. Remember when you're on the water and you have some tough conditions or you're gonna be doing a lot of wading, good pair of lightweight waders keep you warm, some good wading boots, and don't forget your lucky sweater. One thing you have to have when you're out fishing on the ski net, especially for these size fish, is a glove. If you don't have a big net, which I don't like to use, I like to get the glove. This allows you to tail the fish. Oh, he's going. 
Yeah, it's a nice steelhead, it looks like. No. Looks like a beauty. Oh, <laughs> Oh yeah, it's a nice steelhead. Oh, another dandy. Another nice Blade steelhead. Fly out there. Same. Yeah. Same fly. Oh. Nice big. Oh, another. Oh, gee. Ah, man, they're tough. You just can't. Tough fish. She's gonna want to go. Another yeah. doe. Look at that. You know, Not probably about the same size. Yeah. About eight, eight, nine pounds. Probably eight pounds. Nice and chrome. Yeah. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful steelhead. And again, you can tell the going to let her go. You can tell the steelhead, you got the spots. She's gonna go right okay. through your leg, probably. Yeah. Cause she wants to go. There she is. Well, let's let her swim away. <laughs> Gone, all the current. So, talk about what you got it on now. The conditions that we have. Well, we've had pretty tough because uh, normally there's a number of fish coming through the bar and there's little pockets in the bar where you want to try to swing your fly through. A lot of times you can either bottom bounce or swing it in there. And because there hasn't been that many fish yeah. today, I'm specifically targeting steelhead. Oh, okay. Because normally you're catching lots of salmon and stuff. Right. And then when there's not many salmon, Odds are even increased for steelhead, so right. I went to a steelhead type fly okay. as opposed to a you know this rabbit strippy fly. I'm just trying to pick the little, little pockets spots. where they might move in. And I lost a nice coho out there earlier. It came in, had a little snack. You know, there's not a whole bunch of fish right now, but they have to migrate through here. That's the beauty of bar fishing: is the fish all migrate through in you know two, three feet of water, and you just gotta wait till yeah. they come through. Yeah. So why don't we go to the bench right now and tie up uh, the nice rabbit strip again? A fly of French linkers, <laughs> as French always, linker. you know, Brent, he's got all these great patterns. It's just purple rabbit strip, got a nice pink body. So let's go to the bench and tie this one up. This week on the bench, I'm going to tie you up the Skeena Crystal Zonker. Now, if you're going to go to the Skeena River, and you want the opportunity to catch every salmon species and steelhead, this pattern is a must. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we're going to use a Mustad C70SD size 2, some 3 aught red thread to tie with, a 3 16 inch hot orange bead for the bead, some medium shrimp pink chenille for the body, and two-toned rabbit strips pink with purple tips. To start the fly off, take a little bit of your red thread, and again, build up a, a good base layer. It's uh, pretty standard for all flies. You want a good base layer to lay your materials on. And take it right back to the rear of the hook. Take some rabbit strip, and I've taken a strip about three inches long because I want to make sure it extends far enough past the hook. I'm going to lay it on my hook and then split the, the rabbit at the rear of the hook where I'm going to tie it in. And take about three or four wraps right at the rear of the hook just to tie in that rabbit pull the rabbit back and wrap in front of it. Take a strand of your pink shrimp chenille and we're just going to strip off a bit of the the stuff on that just to expose the thread tight into the back of the hook and get it right to the rear. Move your thread forward right to the eyelet and then I like to take two wraps of the chenille because it is fairly fairly thin. So just go over the body a couple times make it a little thicker and finish off near the behind the bead near the eye of the hook. Now that we have the body tied in, we're going to pull this rabbit forward that we had sitting in the back, and just pull the uh, pull the material, the rabbit out of the way until you can expose a bit of the base. Tie it down right near the behind the bead, right near the eye. Trim off any excess you have, and then whip, finish, and tie it in. Finish the fly off, just uh, after you whip finish, cut off your thread. And now we're going to go back and trim it the right length. Again, you don't want this back tail, this back rabbit, too long. You want it about double the length of the hook, or even one and a half times the length. So I'm going to go back about a length and a half and snip it off. Because if you have it too long, you're going to get a lot of false strikes, and we don't want that. So there it is, the finished Skeena Crystal Zonker. You know, this fly can be tied in a variety of different sizes, and if you're going to the Skeena, this pattern is a definite must-have. I'm gonna take a little break and 
go through the recommended setup. There's lots of different setups you can use out here. You can use spay rods with the big long lines. You can use some really heavy sink tips. The way we prefer right now, since we're targeting the steelhead, is we've got a you know, fairly colorful fly. Again, egg sucking leeches, rabbit strips, all the rest work really well. I usually put about two feet to three feet of 15 pound fluorocarbon. Now this is important, you want fluoro, you want it invisible to the fish, so I use fluoro here. Put on my swivel, put a couple of split shots on. I've got a, a couple of BB shots there. I put two split shots on, because you want to get it down the bottom. The fish are just hugging the bottom, so you got to make sure you're down there. And then I've got tw a 20 pound leader actually going up to my fly line. Again, it's up to you what you want to use, but I like to use an eight-way rod. You got to have a fairly skookum rod and of course a large arbor reel. If you don't have minimum 200 yards of backing, you're going to have some issues because when these fish go in that big current, especially some over 20 pounds, you better have a lot of backing in a large arbor reel. I see Dale's out there fishing, so let's walk over and actually see how we're going to approach it using this kind of technique. And maybe a little bit later or a different show, we'll show you how to actually use a full sinking or a sink tip line to get at these fish. But let's go and see what Dale's doing. So, how are you fishing it? Let's explain this a little bit. Okay, well, bar fishing's a little different than your normal fishing, but you got to picture it like a little stream. Okay. What you're looking for, of course, you got the whole massive skein of river behind you. Right. And the fish will come up the edge. So what you're looking for is these little gravel bars that's coming running through here, and all in the gravel bars there's pockets where they can hold right. behind boulders, little pockets. So you're fishing it like a mini river, just oh, okay. like if you're out on a trout stream swinging a, a sink tip. So you're trying to pick a spot where you feel the fish have come in. Okay. I cast down across, let it swing through there. The other thing that I like to do, you know, I know a lot of people use the sink tips and so on. I like to use a, a split shot up on a clear sink tip line. Right. And then I fish it both ways. I bottom bounce through one pocket and then I let it swing through swing another. Through another. It gives me two chances. Right, and since we're targeting the steelhead today, we've got the colorful patterns on for the steelhead and we are letting it swing more than normal. The big so strip, yeah. yeah. And I'm doing more swinging so today. So you flick it out there and show everybody what we're okay. doing, how you're actually casting and all the rest. And then again, what I do is I just usually with the cast, I cast it out. Yeah. Of course, follow it down, tip, tip low, follow it right through. And then you'll see when I finish my float, I don't do any false casting. Okay. What I do is it's finished its float, I just swing it around and pop back it out in. again. It's, okay. it's more times through on a bar. Right. You know, if you've got to take a whole bunch of false casts, no good. Oh, you it's want no to good. Keep... Plus, you, you know, you've got two BB shot weights on there. You don't want to be false casting no. that. It's no. chuck and duck. You want to get it out there and get it in the water. You just want to flip it around, flip it back up. in, keep working it through. And now, should you feel your weights bumping the bottom? Yes. Should you actually feel okay? Yeah, so you want to be near If you're the not bottom. touching the bottom, you're not deep enough, so maybe you got to put on an, uh, maybe another weight. Yeah, or a heavier sink tip line if you're okay. using sink tips, just right. so you can feel that fly touching the touching bottom. Touching the bottom. Because those fish will cl crawl right up the bottom. Now we have the opportunity, obviously, we're targeting the steelhead as we said, but we have a chance for coho. I know there's some uh, sockeye in the system. You know, there's, there's quite a few fish in here. Yeah. I think that uh, today it's been spotty. You know, yeah. a lot of times there's lots of salmon. So we're kind of specifically targeting the steelhead yeah. because there's so few salmon uh, coming so through. Few, yeah. So it's a good time to get your chance yeah. to get your fly in front of those steelhead. Good. And this is prime spot, so I'll let you work a full while and then I'll sub in. We'll just keep subbing back okay. and forth. Sounds good. X. Perseverance. Yeah. yeah I don't... Jeez, he's going way down though. That's good. Oh, we're all set up. You know, multi build. It's a beautiful little fire up here. I'm in the lawn chair. I'm having a nice little nap and then <laughs> fish on. It's being slow. It's been we've had slow, a real slow yeah. time, but here, here's a perfect example why we call him the bulldog. Dale Perseverance. He's out here casting, casting, casting. You know what? You make a thousand casts and you get rewarded. I'm the non-patient guy. I like to take 10, 12. If I'm not catching fish, I go and sleep. But it's great. You end up getting them. So what do you think? What do you think he is? I don't know, but well, he's let's going. get down there because it's probably a big coal or something. He was might jumping be a, around might out be a there. Steely. It was definitely chrome. Was it? And yeah. actually, it was going upstream, which is kind of traditional yeah. of coal and steelhead. That's about Why? as much heat as I can. Can you? Can we get them over in the slack water? Well, there's though? wood down there. We can try. Oh, it. Yeah, but look at how nice it is. We finally got a little reprieve from the rain. <laughs> It's oh. beautiful. He's right in there by that stump. That stump's almost underwater, eh? Okay, well, you know what I'll do is I'll go and get the glove, and I'll try to cycle okay. down there and see. Ah, the glove. I got it here. 
I don't want to go way down there. No, I gotta try to get, I gotta hope he comes back. Wait, you can just feel him. Oh, he's, oh, I see, yeah, he's way down there. Well, I can try to go down there, maybe I'll try to scare him well, back I up. I can kind of try to get over there on the gravel bar, but there's a lot of wood, eh? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of wood in there. We may be able to get it over that side. That's okay. why I kind of want to stay here. Well, I'll try to, try to, I'll go down there. He's going in the wood there, Don. Can't see it. Must be right beside you. Yeah, I know. I can't see him. Just a minute. Oh, there he is out here. <laughs> Look at that. Eh? Power Pretty nice little fish. It's ready to go up. Yeah, it's too bad he was foul hooked. Oh. All right, let's let him go. There he goes. Just a little guy, incidental catch. You know what I'm gonna do is I think that's, there's been a few sockeye there now. How's there? Might be better to switch over to the sockeye hook. And... Well, sockeye are all pink, right? The little pink flies. Yeah. Pink flies, but what about the, uh, what about the steelhead? Do they like the pink too? Um, they do sometimes. Oh yeah, they'll hit the yeah, pink one, yeah, but anything that's, but the bottom bounce in there yeah. is better than, you know, rabbit strips always on the, but that one yeah. was, you know, wasn't, wasn't swinging, right? It was bouncing, yeah. so, and they've hit, he's hit a couple of sockeye up there. Well, so I've had my nap, so maybe I'll uh, get back in there. <laughs> <laughs> the sun's come out though, it's nice. Want more information? Visit us at sfotf.ca. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca and if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to ontheflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.